So this video is going to cover on how we go about translating natural languages such as English sentences into FOL. Let's turn to it. All right, so a sentence of FOL is a correct translation of a sentence of natural language such as English if and only if both the sentence of FOL and the sentence of natural language have the same truth conditions. So that raises the question then for us, what are truth conditions? Truth conditions are those conditions or situations that determine whether a proposition is true or false. So let's consider the English sentence grass is green and the fire hydrant is red okay so that's a sentence of natural language specifically English <clears throat> and we think about when that's true when you would say that's true and when you would say that's false. And you would only say it's true when you find out that the grass that's being talked about really is green and when the fire hydrant that's being talked about is actually red. So if we want to translate this into, into FOL, then we need to find a situation in which um, the sentence is true only in the case in which both grass is green and the fire hydrant is red and it's false in all the other cases. So we can do that <clears throat> well one you can do that just by thinking about it but we can make it clear to ourselves if we make a truth table and suppose we have um, this is our following truth table, let G stand for the grass is green, uh, some uh, sentence of FOL, the grass is green, and let H stand for the fire hydrant is red. All right, so our reference columns are going to represent to us the conditions that are available to us when our sentence in FOL is true and when it's false. So our first reference column gets the TFTF TF pattern. We double the pattern as we move left. So TF, I'm sorry, so TTFF. All right, so we said that this sentence is true only in the case in which the grass that we're talking about really is green and only in the case in which the fire hydrant that we're talking about actually is red. So then we come to these conditions that we're representing um, here in our reference columns, one, two, three, and four. Well, in one it says that the grass really is green. So that's a situation in which the grass that we're talking about actually is green. Same with uh, condition two. Here, the grass really is green as well. But in cases three and four, since it's false that the grass is green, the grass is some other color than green. Whatever other color that is, it just needs to be some other color than green. And since um, one uh, says that it's true that the fire hydrant is red, is a situation in which the fire hydrant 
really is red. And same thing for three, we get that it's true that the fire hydrant is red. So our fire hydrant is red in that case as well. So in case two, since it's false that the fire hydrant is red in that situation, it just needs to be some other color than red, in this case yellow. Same thing in four, it needs to be some other color than red, in this case yellow. So a uh, so when we come back and we think about this sentence, um, it's true only in this case because only in that case uh, is the grass green and the fire hydrant red that we're talking about. In all other cases, um, at least one of those is false. Either the grass isn't green or the fire hydrant isn't red. So it turns out though for this sentence it's going to have the exact same truth conditions because a conjunction in FOL is true if and only if both of its con all of its conjuncts are true, which is situation one. And in all the other cases it ends up being false. So this sentence here has the very same truth conditions as the English sentence as represented by that column. Well, that column plus what situation one, two, three, and four are. So notice for propositions to have the same truth conditions, is for them to be true in all and only those circumstances in which the other is true. So for whatever possible circumstances out there, when one is would be true in that circumstance, the other one needs to be true. And when one is false in that circumstance, the other one needs to be false. So it's not enough um, for them to just have the same truth value in all particular a particular circumstance it needs to be in all possible circumstances and that's why this truth table that we have over here can uh, help us think about the truth conditions of sentences because the purpose of the reference column is to exhaust all those possible combinations uh, it's supposed to exhaust all the possible um, uh, situations in which the sentence could be made true or could be made false All right, before wrapping up the video, I wanted to take a look at another English sentence and trans see how we can translate that into FOL. And the, sen the English sentence that I want to look at is much more difficult than the grass is green and the fire hydrant is red. It says either both C and D are on A's left or neither are. All right, so one thing that we can notice about this sentence is that it starts with either and then later on gives us an or, which tells us that we're dealing with a disjunction here. And that means I can try, in, in translating this, I can think about it piecemeal. I can say, well, what's the first disjunct? And that's going to correspond to this bit here that says both C and D on or on A's left. Well, how would I translate that both uh, C is on A's left and D is on A's left? Well, we have the left of predicate, and we're saying that C is on A's left, so C is the left of A. And since we're saying both, we need the conjunction. Again, use our left of predicate and say that D is to the left of A. All right, so that gets us the same truth conditions as both C and D are on A's left because this asserts that C and D are, on, are to the left of A in both cases. <clears throat> All right, so the other disjunct then corresponds to this portion. 
neither are. So in reading the sentence, we can tell that neither is referring back to C and D, and R is just short of, is, is just a short version of R on A's left. So it's saying neither C nor D are on A's left. And we have a couple of ways that we can um, express that. One way is to say it's false for both of them in each case that they're to the left. So we can express that so it'll be quicker to copy and paste. We can express that by putting a negation out in front of the sentences. So now this one says either both of these are true or for both of these they're false since we have negations out in front of both. All right, if you'll remember from the video about De Morgan's law, another way that we can express this disjunct is by saying neither either, or we could, I'm sorry, by saying not the case either. So by De Morgan's law, 3 is lo logically equivalent to 4, and 4 is logically equ uh, equivalent to 3. All right, and that's because with 4, if we think about that in terms of distributing the negation into the content that's inside of the parentheses, then we just have to make sure to move from uh, this symbol being the disjunction symbol to making it the conjunction symbol and then having our negations actually distributed out. All right, so <clears throat> one way then um, that we can express our English sentence in FOL is by making a disjunction out of two and three and another way that we can do it is by making a disjunction out of 2 and 4. So notice I put a disjunction uh, symbol between both of these complex sentences because these complex sentences are the disjuncts to that disjunction. Um, <clears throat> and I've had to use these parentheses um, in order to, to actually capture the sense of this English sentence. Otherwise, I'd be saying... Well, actually, it'd be grammatically incorrect. I wouldn't be, I'd be saying gibberish. All right, the other way, or another way that, fairly natural way, which we could express the English sentence in FOL would be to take sentence two. And that's one of our disjuncts. And sentence four. All right, so this is one whole negation. So it's being taken as the latter disjunct. And then this conjunction, I needed to put parentheses around to take it as the first disjunct. But either way, five um, and six are ways of expressing either both C and D are on A's left or neither are. 
All right, that concludes this video on translating natural language sentences such as English sentences into FOL. I hope it proved useful.